Hello, middle school. So I am posting your weekly devotion a day early. Um, I have some time this Sunday afternoon to get it done, so I figured I would get it out to you. It does have an assignment attached this week. So for those of you that like to skip over our weekly devotions, now you have to watch it so that you can understand the assignment. So make sure you are checking your weekly plans um, and the Bible uh, plan that I posted yesterday. Make sure you have checked that so you know what to do. But um, I found this devotion. I've been doing devotions from my YouVersion app, and this is a different one. I did not write it, um, but I thought it was a really cool uh, look at Easter, and so I just wanted to go over that with you. So it's called Empty is a Good Thing. Um, so what do you think about when you think about Easter? Now, if you were, we were in class, we'd have a discussion about... Um, different things and different, you'd all have a fun story to tell me about some crazy uncle at Easter dinner or whatever, and that would be great. Um, but, um, <clears throat> some of the examples that are here are the Easter bunny candy family get togethers, pastel colors, right? Everything for Easter is like pink and blue and yellow. Um, all of those things are good and cute, but when it comes to the true meaning East of Easter, they kind of seem a little bit empty, but when it comes to Easter, Empty is a good thing, and that's what we're going to talk about, why empty is a good thing. So um, normally, the concept of being empty isn't good. So what are some things that you can think of being empty that aren't good? Um, if I gave you a Starbucks gift card that didn't have any money in it, that wouldn't be very good, would it? Um, an empty coffee cup. You all know how much I hate an empty coffee cup, right? What about an empty wallet? Empty wallets aren't good either because then you don't have anything in them to go buy coffee at Starbucks, right? So um, a lot of times we think of empty as being a bad thing, but um, I'm going to talk to you about how empty is good when it comes to Easter. So empty is a good thing. Point number one, Sorry, I got a scroll on my computer. I'm trying to be high tech, guys, I really am. So, empty, my dog is drinking out of his water bowl. If you can hear that, I'm sorry. Empty is a good thing. When we look at Easter in the proper light and we understand what really happened, what was going on and why we celebrate Easter, empty is a good thing. When Jesus was murdered and nailed to the cross, they buried him in a tomb, which was basically a cave. And a huge, a rolled a huge stone in front of the tomb. Then three days later, something unbelievable happened. The tomb was empty. Luke 24, 1 through 8 says this. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there, puzzled, Two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Is He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So, empty... An empty tomb meant that Jesus was, was alive, right? He says, why are you looking here among the dead for someone who's alive? Number two, empty is proof. Now, seventh grade, we've talked about proof of who Jesus is. Um, sixth grade, we've touched on it a few times as we've read, read through the New Testament. But empty helps us to confirm some proof. Um, earlier in Jesus' ministry, he said he had to go through this to his disciples. So in Mark 8, 31, this is the New Living Translation. He says, Then Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, many terrible things, and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious laws. He would be killed, but three days, three days later, he would rise from the dead. So Jesus told them this. This is proof of what Jesus said, Right? If Jesus, Jesus could have come and said, well, on Tuesday, the sky is going to turn purple and all of the stars are going to glow like disco balls, right? But if it never happened, then there's no credibility to what Jesus said and there's, we can't prove 
who he is. So the empty tomb, when he says he would rise from the dead and then he rose from the dead, it's proof that we can believe that Jesus means what he says and that that when he says something's coming in the future, we can believe that that thing is coming. So everyone heard someone make a, have you ever heard someone make a bunch of claims but just couldn't back it up? Jesus did not do that. We read, just read Mark that Jesus said he would die and rise again after three days and he backs it up. Now I can follow somebody who makes a claim this huge and then backs it up, right? If we look at all of the things that Jesus says about himself that then come true, that helps us to be confident in who he is. Point number three, empty is powerful. Jesus has power over death. Because Jesus died and rose again, because he is Jesus who said, because he, Jesus, is who he says he is, Jesus has power of sin's greatest weapon, and that is death. He can take control of that. You know, for something to have life, something has to have died. Did anyone eat some fruit today? Did any of you have fruit or vegetables? Um, it had to be disconnected from, from the tree, its source of life. It had to die to give you life. Jesus is the one who says, I can give you life. I can make it so that you never really die. That even after life on earth is done, you will live with me forever because that's how much I love you. So if you think about the things that die for us to have life, Jesus was one of those things, right? He loved us enough that he died so that we could continue to have life. The empty tomb shows us that Jesus has power over death. He looked straight, death, looked death straight in the eyes. He took death's best sting and overcame it. How cool is that, right? Point number four. Um, this is our last point. Empty is permanent. Now, in my case, when I have an empty coffee cup, I just go to my Keurig and I fill it up again, right? Or you can refill an empty gift card or wallet some, sometimes. But in this case, empty is permanent. You know, plenty of people visit Jerusalem every year. Plenty of people walk down some of the same roads that Jesus may have walked down. One of the places people love to visit is the place where historians believe Jesus was buried. And guess what? Till this day, the tomb is still empty. Romans 6, 9 says, We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. Jesus wasn't in the tomb three days after he died. He isn't in the tomb today, he, and he never will be. Jesus is God and is alive forever. His body wasn't stolen. It wasn't in the wrong tomb. It wasn't a magic trick. Um, a lot of us have gone through these crazy theories together, right? They're not true. So when we look at the true meaning of Easter and everything Jesus did for us on the cross, empty is a good thing. Empty means Jesus is who he says he is. It means he has power over death and it is permanent. Jesus is permanently alive and death will never overcome him again. When we decide to follow him instead of our own selfish desires, we too can begin to really live. So I thought that was an awesome example of just a way to look at the tomb this Easter as we are in this crazy season of life when everything is changing all the time. When sometimes days are super depressing, um, sometimes really it's really hard. Uh, your parents are still going to work because they're considered essential, or you have a crazy teacher who's giving you all kinds of work to do, and you just want to sit down and not do anything all day. Um, you know, this is a crazy season, but we have to remember that Jesus has power. Jesus is in control. Um, his empty tomb is permanent and that means that we have victory and we have eternal life and we have the opportunity to be with him. So, um, do you remember that there's an assignment attached to this? I don't want to just, um, blow off the importance of the message, but I want to remind you, make sure you look at your Bible plan videos and, um, documents in the classroom and know that we are praying for you this week. We miss you so much, so much. Um, we hope you're all doing well and staying healthy and we love you. See you sometime.